Welcome back, everyone, to the Flow Track Podcast. My name is Kevin. His name is Gordon. We have a packed show for you today. So much track and field action starting today out of the NCAA Championships and continuing all through the weekend. Uh, we're also going to do Guess My PR and read some internet comments. Gordon, the NCAA Championships are here. Snuck up on me. How prepared do you feel? They snuck up on you? Yeah, they did, kind of. Mm-hmm. They did. What have you been doing? I have my countdown clock set for Worlds. I have my countdown clock set for USAs. And I just I never got around to setting the countdown clock for NCAAs. And boom. Also, starting on a Wednesday, that always catches me off guard. I always think it starts on Thursday. But then I was like, wait, four-day meet. It doesn't go till Sunday. So, yeah, it did sneak up on me. But this weekend in general, man, is just packed with track. Yeah, that's true. I mean, NCAAs, you got the Rome Diamond League. Uh, Portland Track Festival, uh, New York City Grand Prix. Mm-hmm. Are we going to do a lot of pods as a result? We Let me tell you the pod schedule, Gordon. Right, it's about me. to get real hectic for basically Colt. <laughs> now, you and I are fine, but Colt is uh, going to be busy. So tomorrow, Thursday, we're recording this one on Wednesday morning, 3 p.m. We're going to go live post YouTube or post uh, Rome on YouTube. Excuse me. So we'll recap the Rome Diamond League, which will be – uh, plenty to talk about. Then Friday, 10 30 PM, 10 30 PM. I'll say that again on Friday, post NCAAs Saturday, we're going to go 7 PM post NCAAs. And then Sunday, we're going to go 5 PM post New York city grand prix. And then we'll have a normal Monday pod. So we're going Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, we're doing six days in a row of a podcast i better i better uh i don't know i've never done six pods in a row (laughs) oh i have during the olympics but yeah i don't know if i'm prepared for it by the time sunday comes i might be a little uh tracked out will i be who's who's gonna who's gonna tap first when it comes to talking (laughs) about people running in circles you or me well, the good news is all these meets are a little bit different, both in terms of fields and the stakes. So I think we'll, I think we'll be fine. I think we both can handle it. Tampa Eagle asks, when's the sub pod coming for, for May? Yeah, we're going to have to record that. I'll have to find some time in the next. I was actually thinking about that yesterday, too. Yeah. So thank you, Tampa Eagle. I was like, wait a minute. We got to do that. And I was like, but also we're doing like six pods in a row. Yeah, so. we'll do it, though. We'll do it. We'll we're going to do it. We appreciate it all the uh, the members of the uh, Flowtrack Podcast YouTube community. If you have ideas for that pod, let us know either in the comments or send us an email, flowtrackpodcast at gmail.com. Of course, that's where you can send an email to get on Internet Coach or Guess My PR or nominate yourself or someone you know or admire for Kick I have of an the idea. Week. I have an idea for all a right? pod, for a bonus pod for our members. Yeah. The idea was... We call it the fourth place pod. It's where we predict who's going to finish fourth at USA's. You like that? We pick who's going to get fourth? Yeah. Why don't we just pick the top four? No, no, no. I just want who's going to get just fourth. fourth. Okay. See, the problem with is you he... saying this now is people are going to be like, that's a dumb idea, and then we can't do it. Okay, that's true. <laughs> I think it's a great idea. Just... Predicting who Why don't we... you think is going to be the first loser, that's a good idea. For first one out? Yeah. Yeah. Is that a compliment, though, in some ways? Like someone would be like, hey, you had a, great, had a great race. They got fourth. Yeah, but it's a compliment and an insult and a, ooh, you almost mm. had it, you know? It's... Yeah. We don't need to do the idea. Right. This is something I was thinking. Like, because everyone picks the winners. Everyone picks the top three. No one picks fourth place. And I want to pick what if we did three place. and what if we did three and four? We did the whole the agony and ecstasy of sports. Right? Because those one are the in, most last interesting. One out. Yeah. Yeah. Because those are the most interesting people to interview too, right? Usually is third and fourth. Those are the two interviews you want to see after an event. Who barely got in and then who who barely missed out. Some I don't know, third and fourth place pod. Um, Judson said we could call it the copper metal pod, fourth place. There you go. I don't know what that means. That means something, doesn't it? Well, 
gold, silver, bronze, and then fourth, he's just assigning another metal to it, which would be copper. Copper. Okay. I like that. <laughs> they should All give right. out a medal to fourth place. It should what should it, it should be like a gift certificate to like to like Buffalo Outback Wild Wings Steakhouse or something. Or Buffalo Wild Wings. Watch the meat on TV. Enjoy some yeah. Buffalo Wild Wings on us. Mm-hmm. All right, let's get going. We got a lot to do. NCAA starts tonight in Eugene today, Wednesday, Thursday. Friday, Saturday. Um, we're going to circle four events to watch. If we have time at the end, we might come back to some other ones. So if there's ones that people are interested in hearing us talk about, um, throw them in the chat and we'll get back to them. But um, Men's 100 is where I wanted to start. We've talked about that event a lot this year. It's a very exciting event. And this thing is going to waste no time getting going because we've talked about the heat of death before. There's a very clear heat of death in the men's 100. It's heat one, where you have Bowling, Jones, Makai Williams, Van Belay, Sumler, Manu, Harrison, and Cunningham. Now, top two plus the next three fastest times advance, so there's a possibility that a good number of guys advance out of that heat. But just in general, what do you think of, of the heats, and what do you think of this men's 100-meter event? Yeah, I mean... This is the ultimate death heat. You could argue that the top three best, uh, no, this, you could say three of the best four are in yeah. this first heat. And I believe the favorite, Williams from Oregon, is in the seat. I think Fambula is the, always the wild card with his ability to have slow starts but ultimately kick. I do yeah. think Fambula is kick. not that good in the 100 Love compared the to what kick. he'll be in the 200. But mm-hmm. Williams, who's the favorite, or one of the favorites with Favor Ash? Bowling, who is always going to be in the mix. And Jones, who, you know, remember when he ran that crazy 60 back in January? That's mm-hmm. a crazy four of Bowling, Jones, Williams, and Fambula. Only two get the auto. What if it's into a headwind? And then all of a sudden, you're having one of these big names not even make a final mm-hmm. because they weren't yeah. in a, a better conditioned heat. Mm-hmm. Well, even some of those other guys are capable of making a final when you look at like Manu and, and Harrison. Those are real good runners. Yeah, heat two, um, not as strong just in terms of star power. Heat three is going to have favor Ash in it. I mean – the contrast you're going to see in Heat 1 is going to be very interesting between Williams, who's an amazing starter, and Fonbele, who's an amazing closer. And it could end up coming down to that in the final. I think, obviously, Ash is going to factor in there in the final as well. Maybe Makai Harris of Texas, who's going to be in that same third heat with him in the opening round. But I haven't seen – I didn't see anything at regionals that, that changed my opinion. Obviously, Makai Williams has been in running real well. I think he's going to get get the win in this event. What do you think? You have a top yeah, three. Yeah, I mean, right now I have Favor Ash as the favorite. Uh, my personal mm-hmm. pick is I think Williams will win. He's on his home track. You know, he's sleeping in his own bed. He hasn't really had to go anywhere. This guy's going to be sleeping in his own bed from Pac-12s to NCAA's to USA's to Worlds if he makes the World Team. So. I think that's a big advantage. Uh, Favor Ash, though, should be the one to challenge, in my opinion. The guys went 19-7, albeit when dated. Um, not 19-7, 9-7, albeit when dated. Uh, so uh, I think it's going to be between Ash and Williams, and then I think Williams prevails. I do think there's other, like, Masanganwi, the Fambulas, the Bowlings, the... You know, the Stanford kid, I, I don't know how to say his last name. Um, how do you say Stanford kid's last name? Um, let me get in front of me. Adodi uh, Onwuzarike. Onwuzarike. Onwuz- yeah. Seated at 10.03. So he's pretty good. But yeah, at the end of the day, really good Williams has been running consistently. And uh, I think we might see something special. What's the collegiate record? That's Coleman, right? Coleman, yeah, 982. That, in my opinion, is 
in jeopardy. If it's good conditions, I do think Williams can run 981, which would be pretty incredible. All right, let's move on to the women's 200, another one of the events to watch. And we've favorite event. We've got our favorite event here in the women's 200. We have Favor Ophelia of LSU, collegiate record holder and SEC champion going up against a tough field that includes Abby Steiner, the indoor champion for Kentucky. This thing, though, I mean, those two are the clear favorite, but there's some depth in this event as well, too. I think if everybody runs at their best, you're going to get Ophelia and Steiner up front, but it's not as if they're the only two out there. There's a lot of women here who are. We've talked about a Navy battle um, before. Um, Texas, obviously, is going to have a lot of women in this race capable of popping one, but I think it's going to come down to Ophelia and Steiner. I've explained before why I think Ophelia is the favorite. You have Ophelia number one still, correct, or no? I have Ophelia number one and Steiner two. You feel good about that pick? Uh, no, I, I think Abby Steiner is going to win. I mean, there's no way, the way I've been talking about Abby Steiner for the past three years, that I'm going to say, like, oh, yeah, she's going to lose NCAAs. I think Abby's going to win. Uh, but I do believe Favor of Philly deserves to be the number one seed, obviously, because she beat her at SECs and is the collegiate record holder. But there's one more race, and we'll find out. Favor could continue that, continue her run and be the ultimate victor. But I also think Abby Steiner has a legitimate chance to end with the top and end with the last, not last laugh, because that seems harsh, but the, the last, uh, more, more important win. I mean, she is the indoor 200 meter champion. Indoor 200 is not the same as an outdoor. I get it, but mm -hmm. we'll see what happens. I, I think we're going to see a collegiate record regardless of who wins. I also think it's going to be an interesting dynamic. Here's my question for you. These mm -hmm. women are going to be going up against each other multiple times. They're going to be in the four by one against each other, in the open 100, in the 200. Mm -hmm. Do you think head to head, it's going to be a 3-0 sweep, whichever way? Or do you think they're going to split a victor uh, with each other? I don't. I think they're too close for it to be 3-0 in either direction. Yeah. That, that's, that's my thinking. The 100 is just a totally different beast when you talk about that event, right? Because you got other names that are involved in, in winning it. The 200 is both their best event, which is what, what is going to make this so compelling. Um, I just hope we get it, right? Because so much can go wrong in NCAA meet, and so much of what's scripted can sometimes go out the window. I think this is the matchup everybody's excited about seeing, and I, I hope we – we see it because this is the pinnacle. Like they'll go on and they'll have great, they'll probably have great post NCAA seasons. Like Steiner's going to try to make the team, um, you know, Ophelia make the team for Nigeria. But this is like the the race that's been circled. This is the one that we've been looking forward to all outdoor season long. So I just hope everybody gets to the start line. That's what I'm rooting for. Everybody gets to the start line healthy. Yay, health. So when he so when Hooray you see the help. start line, you're going to stand up and cheer yeah. and celebrate. We got the start line. Woo, woo. Sometimes you're gonna in celebrate track, and that's then enough. go home. You're not even going to watch the race. You're going to be like, they no. made the start line. That's all that matters. It, they did it. They all got there. Whatever happens next is, is gravy. I, well, I guess I want no injuries in the final either. So I, I might have to wait and watch the race. But they're great. They're both great. I'm excited about it. But yeah, I will. And we'll clap up the start line for sure. All right, let's go to the distance side of things. Women's 5,000. Women's 5,000. Top seed there is Caitlin Tui of NC State. She leads a large NC State contingent in this event. She was runner-up twice indoors in the 3,000 and the 5,000. In this race, she's going to be challenged by Taylor Rowe, who was the indoor 3,000 meter champion. Some others in there who can give her a good race, presumably Lauren Gregory, who will be doubling black from the 10,000. Abby Nichols, who's been running well for Colorado. 
who do you think is the biggest challenger or and Mercy Chilang got as well? Who do you think is the biggest challenger to Tui? I mean, it's Taylor Rowe. And I don't think anyone else really has shown uh, a better kick than Taylor Rowe has in the indoor season. And Rowe's outdoor season hasn't shown any signs of slowing down. Chilang got, I feel like, if it was 20, 20, 2020 or 2021, maybe I'll believe in Chilang got, but I think the, what's the word? Whatever has, the banner has has switched. What's the phrase? God dang it. I'm so bad. Oh, Come uh, Sometimes you're so far off, I can't even help you. You know, like. Sometimes, sometimes you're the in the torch. neighborhood. The and torch has passed the torch. the torch. Yeah, there it is. But the how was I supposed passed. to know you were talking about a torch being passed? You gave no indications there that that's where you were going. Well, it used to be Chilangat's event. Now it's the Roe and Tui event. Right. Keep hey, going. It makes sense great. in my head. Maybe the viewers and the listeners don't understand it, but it makes sense in my head. But what I'm getting into, I do believe it's going to come down to those two, Tui and, uh, and Roe. And I think, you know, I think eventually Caitlin Tui's got to break through. Like, she's got to get the win eventually. Like, she can't. I don't think Caitlin Tui is the next Jordan Hase, where you just. She won one, though. Hase won one. When did Hase win? Uh, she won, uh, I think, Indoor 3, I want to say. Oh. She won a title, though. She was close a lot. And yeah. like Cranny, Cranny was close a lot. There's been a lot of people who have just been in the mix year after year after year. I mean, we forget, because of the COVID year and everything, Tui hasn't really been – like, Indoors was the first time she was threatening for a win in yeah. any championship. So – you say finally she's got to break through. This is really her second go round and her first go round where she's the favorite. Because in those races, indoors, she was not the favorite. This is her first time going in as a favorite. But she's now run 406 for 1500. She's now shown this ability to, to front run, which we saw in high school, but that was against high school competition. Now she's doing it against collegians. I think that's where this race is going to be decided. Roe wants to be able to you know stay in contact so that way she can use her good clothes she was gonna try to run away with this thing which i think is going to make it a fascinating race this is not going to be sit and kick they're going to go for it and nc state having five women in this race is a huge advantage for her having that many teammates there yeah and also we can't forget rose advantage was that she kind of surprise people indoors like people like wait a minute oh crap row like pulled away and we don't have enough time to close it and no one saw it coming now everyone knows that what row's going to do so i think that's going to be an advantage for the field against taylor row because they're going to know mm. hey we don't want what happened indoors to happen again yes you also have the not only no you said there's five teammates that's five nc state S athletes? steelman steelman bush Starlipper, and then there's one other one, isn't there? Yeah, Shaw. Savannah Shaw and Tui. There's actually okay. six because the Tennessee athlete is going to NC State next year. <laughs> right, but I'm uh, talking Sydney, about Sydney Seymour. But yeah. like, you, that's kind of they have a feature team in on, on the course as, as well. I'm nice. talking about, though, if you're trying to come up with a race plan that's going to put her in the best position to win. Now they all want to have good races, I'm sure. So it's not just going to be, Hey, let's just go full on team tactics and sacrifice everybody's race. But all those women are capable enough. They can get the pace going. And I think everybody would agree that Tui's is going to benefit from that harder pace, just the way she likes to run. And just the fact that her season's best is so much better than everybody else's. Can she close? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, she's run a fast 1500. She can close. But when you're talking about closing in these crazy, crazy, really tactical races, sometimes you're not talking about 1,500 meter speed. Sometimes you're talking about 200 meter speed. And I don't think she wants to leave it that late. That's not advantageous to her. What if the NC State women actually do form a strategy and they take their, their four non Caitlin Tui runners and they form a circle around Taylor mm -hmm. Rowe when the move is made so that? Yeah. 
there's a little bit of a extra few seconds of for Tui to kind of separate herself from the field. That'll be fun. I oh, I did think one, it was I, one day I did think life, it was where we I got an see... internet coach uh, submission from someone asking if that was legal. I did think that was weird. Just, just kidding. But no, one day in my life, I do want to see that happen at like a non high school meet. I want to see legitimately other athletes sacrifice themselves for their teammate to win by doing something crazy like forming a wall of athletes mm. and not breaking rules too, like owning your lane and like it's just you know that like hey we're gonna slow the pace down make it harder for the yeah, challenger yeah. to run around us to give our top top runner more of a cushion i would love to see that it'll never happen because we're an individual sport but it would be great to see i would love people complain <laughs> people get so angry oh you're ruining the sanctity of the sport it's like hell no they're teammates they're doing what they want i would love to see it <laughs> it won't happen but i would love to see it all right, the other one I wanted to talk about, men's, men's 5,000, which is a deep field, a lot of contenders here, features Nico Young, Morgan Beetlescum, who's in this event, uh, Dylan Jacobs, Adonis Kiyoko, um, Kai Robinson, Ryan Fay, Cole Sprout, Owen Hacker. I mean, how many, first of all, let me ask you, how many, Guys, do you think can win this race? All right, let me count. One, two, scroll back up. One, two, three, four, five, six. I think six guys can win. Are you going to say the names or are we just going to guess? <laughs> I think. Hacker can win. I think Cole Sprout can win. I think Brian Fay can win. I think Beetlescum can win. I think Nico Young can win. And then I think um, Athanas Kiyoko can win. All right. So pretty wide open. And your favorite is who? I actually, I honestly think the favorite is Nico Young. Mm. Guys on 13-11. I think it, the sexy pick is going to be a Morgan Beetlescum because you know he has that great mile speed. Mm -hmm. or Brian Fay because he had that, that really good 5K at Brian Clay. but the kick, right? Yeah, the kick. So, I mean, Olin Hacker's a, a, a wild one, wild card as well. He's, what, a seventh-year senior. He, he has some speed to himself as well. Uh, but I do think – I think people are sleeping on Nico Young. It's kind of weird to say that out loud because – No one's Nico's sleeping on Nico Young. Come on, come on. That's silly. No one's sleeping on Nico Young. Well, they are if they're not yeah, picking them to win the race. They are if they're not picking them to win the race. You're probably not picking them. You no, know, I'm not going to pick him. Picking them. But I like. I think this so is there's a lot Michael of cool. Young's Grant Fisher moment. and gets his first title. That's what I think it is. Grant Fisher Nico won Young's. his first title as a sophomore. Yeah, sure. I think Nicky Young, as a sophomore, wins his first title. So you have a lot of different interesting angles there. Right? So you you went through the Nico Young story. The Kyoko story, guy's just been around forever, super aggressive runner. If he wins it, he's probably going to be doing it, charging out really hard from the gun. Like, will that pay off? Hacker, there's an interesting hacker Tui dynamic here of Pen Relay's redemption. Tui, in right. that great battle with Chrissy Gear, runner up, obviously wanted to get the win. And then Hacker, remember, took a fall in the four by mile with 200 to go, which he was none too pleased about nor should he be. Faye, you're right, a big kick. That kind of put him on the map. Beetlescum, I think we both thought he could win indoors. Can he pull it off maybe outdoors? Maybe we were a season ahead, and, and he probably thinks he's got all the tools necessary to win it. So I'm, I'm going to go actually with Beetlescum uh, for that very reason. His season this year has been pretty good. You know, didn't, get the, didn't win all of his races, but I'm going Beetlescum. I know you're going Nico, but I'm going to go Beetlescum. Yeah, I'm going Nico. Nico for the win. And I think after the win, Abdi Hamaner is going to walk up to him and be like, you're welcome, in like a fun little way. Because if Abdi Hamaner was in this race, he would have won easily. Yeah. Which kind of sucks that we don't have him in this race. Before we go to uh, Rome Diamond League, I do want to talk about one bonus event that I should have said while we were waiting to go live. 
But the men's fifteen hundred, the men's fifteen hundred, I think is a wild one. I think there's a very interesting three three uh, athletes. You got Ilya Kipsang, Mario Garcia Romo, and the wild card from Morocco, I believe, in South runs with South Carolina, Giannis. Mm-hmm. That's going to be interesting. It's three guys who've all run 335 or 334. They're all in the SEC. They didn't all run against each other at the SEC because South Carolina kid did not compete. But that's going to be mm-hmm. very interesting. I think you have a big three-headed monster in that men's 1500, and I'm excited to see how that plays out. All right, let's go to Rome. Rome is on Thursday. As we mentioned, we'll do a recap pod right after. The race of the meet is this women's 200. Which I know we've I feel like we've said this a couple times now. This might be what the world championship final looks like. And this is another one of those races where you could sub a person here, a person there, and we don't know if everybody's gonna show up. But having Elaine Thompson Hurrah and Shrika Jackson in this race, having Dina Asher Smith in this race, having Kambunji in this race, and then you're throwing in Shawnee Miller Weibo, who I'm mean, just assuming her focus is gonna be on the four hundred, but she's run twenty one seven in the two. And then you're throwing in uh, Allison Felix into the mix. This has just got a lot of things going for it, Gordon. This is a multi-dimensional women's 200 that I'm very interested to see. And I think it's it's Elaine Thompson Hurrah's toughest test of 2022 um, that she's seen. Right? There hasn't been a hundred where she's been um, against this good of a field. Because that 100 meter field at Pre was missing Shelly and Fraser Price. So I think this is going to be her toughest test yet. Yeah, I would agree with that. But even though it's the toughest test, I really think it's just her and Sharika Jackson. I'm Dean Asher Smith, I'm not really sold on as a legitimate top tier challenger to Elaine Thompson Raw. I think Dean Asher Smith. Even though she has had her her moments where she has been at the top a few years ago, I think she's more of a of a fourth through seventh type runner as opposed to a top two type runner. Shawnee Miller Weibo, we have no idea what we're getting from. That could turn into a great challenge. Shawnee could be in incredible shape and ready to run a sub twenty two second, um, sub twenty two second two hundred. She did quote say, "I don't think I'll be doing." It for 400 meters in two years time so this is her you know she's moving down in distance maybe maybe she's moving up john a miller eight? 800 let's do that make it happen who says no who says no uh, she doesn't Other than her I, I mean, she, <laughs> she says no she miller like, hey, Weibo I'm... is one of the few people who at their best right you could see mixing it up Right, she just has that top end talent in the two. Now, if Elaine Thompson or Ra is at her best, then that's a different story. But she's somebody who could who could have the potential to to challenge her. So that's what makes this race so interesting. Obviously, I'm picking Elaine Thompson Hurrah. I think she's gonna get this victory. Um and then you have Felix, right? And I've I laid out the the Felix path to the team as well it doesn't involve the 200 so this is just reps for her and listen there's definitely some people that felix can and and should be in this field but if she gets one of these bigger names that's just going to strengthen that idea that and and it might even put into the mix could she make the team individually in the quarter the two i think we agree that's secondary but if she runs the quarter At USA's, we ran through the descending order list last pod. We don't need to go through that again, but she's already in the mix. If she runs a two and beats some of these bigger names, you're probably thinking, hey, okay, maybe she can run 50.3 at USA's or 50.2. at US. Maybe there's more time to get knocked off, and then perhaps she could really get into the mix in that open quarter. Yeah, and also it'll be interesting to see – the time difference between Shawnee Miller, Weibo, and Allison Felix. Because if Shawnee goes out yeah. there and gets, you know, second or third and runs 22-1, right? 
-hmm. seeing how far back Allison Felix is from Shawnee Miller way, but will be a good litmus test to understand where Allison Felix not only now ranks in the 400 in the U.S. level, but at the world level. And like, all right, if she's within this distance with a Shawnee Miller Weibo type, we know Allison is in the fitness level to not just make a team, to not just be top three at the U.S., but potentially get through a semifinal at the world level, maybe make even make a final. Mm -hmm. You know, the 400. No one's running away with it in the 400. There are obviously are some a few great talents out there, but it's not incredible depth the way the men's 100 is or the women's 200 is, right? It's, there's a, uh, we'll, we'll, it's not a crazy year for the women's 400. So I'm looking at the distance between Felix and Shawnee Miller Weibo as more of a litmus test for where Felix is at in the 400. I think this is interesting. I mean, everybody. Everybody has something on the line in this race because I think it's interesting to see like Sharika Jackson because theoretically 200 would be where she really can shine. Uh, the Olympics it went out early in the 200. That never made sense. Like, can she put together uh, an incredible 200? I mean, she's run 21.81, but you think, all right, she might even be capable of more based on what she's run in the 100, based on what she's run in the, in the 400 as well too. A lot to watch for in that one. Um, we also have the women's eight. We're going to see a thing. Mo battle it out with Natoya Ghoul, Rosemary Amanza, Hailu, Nikai. Going to be a thing. Mo's second diamond league of her career, Gordon. This is her second. Her first Pretty international last. one too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Although it feels like she's been on the scene forever. She has not. Isn't it crazy that a thing Mo's seasons best in the 800? Is two oh two, two yeah yeah, yeah. She's only run really warm up style two a uh, hundreds. The one race where I felt like she went hard. There are two. Do you ever season up? Correct me if I'm wrong. Pen relay six hundred, and the Milrose Mile. She didn't finish the Milrose Mile, and then Pen relay six hundred. She dominated. Other than that, hasn't it basically been some? I guess she had some quarters. She, yeah, she, she had that sub fifty, yeah. sub fifty quarter, but yeah, it's all been preparation. It's all it's all prologue, right? Yeah, she not she didn't break fifty in the four hundred. She went fifty point four in Puerto Rico. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Well, yeah, there hasn't been like a marquee moment. I mean, I guess you could say the pen relay six hundred, but like she ran one twenty four and a six hundred in Arizona. She ran a 51 second 400 in AM. Obviously, the 202 800 in Waco, Texas. She ran like an indoor mile 437 at AM before her DNF at Milrose. She was a four by four split at Texas Relays. So, yeah, she hasn't been putting up like marks that are reputable to what she is, which is the best 800 meter runner in the world. And we're finally going to get that, right? We're going to get that in this Rome Diamond League. And I'm excited. The women's 800 is not the same as the men's 800. They're actually going to give us something <laughs> to watch. And I'm excited for that. And the thing most should go out here, dominate, run at least a 158 or better. And get us excited for the next few weeks of women's 800 meter running. Do you have a time pick for the 100? I mean, Curly's the big favorite. You should win this one. I'm going to give you the over under a 990. 990? I'll go under. i just under. 989. 989. All right. I'm going to He's run 992 push. this year. Yeah. I think he runs 990. <laughs> Kyrie King's run 998 this year. He's the only other sub 10 guy in that, in that field. Men's five should be pretty interesting as well. But really, man, all that focus, all that attention is going to be on that women's two, as it should be. Men's 400, you got Karani, Isaac McWalla, Michael Cherry trying to bounce back. That'll be, that'll be an interesting one to track. But no 400-meter hurdles. Oh, except for, Michael I Ch guess, 
no men's four minute hurdles, but you got Femke Bowl in the in the women's four minute hurdles. Michael Cherry's what? forty-four second streak ended. Yep. yep. That was a bummer. What do you think? Uh, you have a time pick for Bowl? I mean, she's doing two of these races back to back. She just she just ran on Monday, and she's gonna run again on Thursday, which I guess is that's good prep, I guess, for World Championships. But fifty-three ninety-four. What do you think she's gonna go? Not gonna lie, I wasn't impressed with her fifty-three ninety-four. Just the, well, because you just you of... just saw a fifty one sixty one. I think that might be yeah. part of it. Yeah, that tends to skew your perspective. Yeah, it's kind of sad that I'm now looking at fifty threes as like, eh, when really like fifty three is like top five in the world every year. Mm. Um, yeah, I think Femke's probably going to run another fifty three high, maybe a fifty three seven, fifty three eight. I don't think we're gonna get anything crazy out of her. I think if we're gonna have to wait if this hopefully we see it at worlds yeah if this trend line continues you got sydney out there and then i think it's a bull muhammad battle for silver that's the yeah. way i see it sh- shaping up i bull gonna have to be at her best but sydney being able to go faster than what she <laughs> ran last year in tokyo is an absurd proposition and people can say that they were prepared for it but i don't think anybody's actually prepared for that idea of like oh you know that iconic tokyo time that she ran yeah she basically almost broke that with hurdles in the wrong spot in her four meter opener in a race no one within two seconds ever and people were not prepared for that scenario even the most optimistic prognosticators out there true 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 all right anything else well we got guess my PR and we got uh, YouTube comments, but um, I think I'm checking in on the chat. Folks are saying that uh, all in the game is saying that Miller Weibo is talking about focusing on the 200 or the heptathlon. Which heptathlon? That that would be your dream because you're all you're always trying to put people in different events, particularly people into heptathlons and decathlons. You tried years to convince Grant Holloway. Uh, to no avail but that would be talk about it a step up in difficulty i used to just run one lap now i'm going to run seven events her 400 uh her 400 speed would uh i mean versatility um she's got a high doesn't she have a high jump mark i want to say i feel like i've looked this up before shawnee miller weibo in a heptathlon she's doing the inverse daphne shippers Yes. It, inverse Warholm, too. Warholm started Warhol. off doing mul- multi. Yeah, that's crazy. Warholm was a multi guy. I forgot about that. Okay. Oh, wow. That's okay, a fun so she's Jeopardy done a, fact. She's done a lot of stuff here. She's run the 300 meter hurdles, but that was in 2010. High jumped 170 in 2018. She long jumped uh, 629, which is worth 1,062 points. Shot put. He threw the shot in 2020, uh, 1170 for 691. So she's, she's dabbled some of his other events. What's the other throw you got to do for a heptathlon? Can you name the heptathlon events? Yeah. 100 hurdles. You got the eight. 800, yeah, you got 200. The, the two, the eight, the high jump. Long jump, shot, and jab. Jab is, man. Isn't the hurdles? Jab is difficult. There's no hurdles? Hundred hurdles. That's what I said. Hundred hurdles, two, eight, high jump, long jump, shot, and jab. Jab, though, is the one that takes time. I've been at meets. I remember going to, was it Pac, it was Pac 10s back in the day at Hayward and watching just like high level Division I athletes just struggle with the jab one. Just because there's only so much time to practice, it's an incredibly technical event. And when things go wrong in the javelin, like it, it's not gonna go very far. <laughs> just like it made these D1 athletes look like beginners, basically, for some. Now some of them are specialists, right? And they come at it more from a, a perspective of having more experience. But if you're just like, hey, I'm a, I'm a sprint hurdle type person, it's tough to get that one down. Yeah, the javelin looks really easy, but I know it's not. 
Like it looks like it's oh, easy it's, to throw a yeah. stick. No. It's just like, it's oh, it's like an easy motion to do. It looks the the stick appears light, you know? It just feels like, oh yeah, I could throw that. I could I, I've thrown a football before. Like you feel like you're throwing your brain tells you it's like throwing a football. And you can throw a football mm-hmm. far, so why can't I throw a stick far? And then you yeah. try it, and you're like, oh, this is, this is hard. This is, and it goes like 10 meters, and you're like, all right. So we're not going to do this in public anymore. <laughs> you know the little, we went out there that one time for that AAU video with the like, kids javelin, remember? Wasn't Brian yeah, throwing yeah. that around? And yeah, even that was hard to, to get it right. It was, just, it was very difficult. It's got to come off your hand a certain way. Uh, in the chat, Jamie Webb, hopefully it's that Jamie Webb, says, Gordon, who's your pick for world champs? Men's 800. That, well, I don't think they should have it, so I shouldn't have a pick. If I truly believe that they need to cancel the event, then I'm not going to have a pick. But in, this weird, in the crazy scenario that they decide to hold the race, who is my pick? I do think Clayne Murphy will be in the mix to medal. I think he'll also be in the mix to win, but I'm not going to pick him. I, I, you know what? I'm going to go on. I'll, I'll go with the, the Algeria kid who got second in that, in that 800. Moad. Mula. Not Moad. Mula. Mula from Algeria. That's where I'm going. All right. Mula from Algeria. He is my pick. Slomani Mula. All right. Yes. I think you can get good odds on him if they have odds. Well, Wanyoni, I think, will be the favorite. Kabet, have to consider. I don't him. think Wanyoni's going to win. I mean, Zahafi, yeah. the Texas Tech kid. Like, we're all like, dude. I don't even think Zahafi's. Oh, oh. Speaking of the the eight hundred, I don't think Zahafi's going to win the eight outdoors. I think it's going to be Navarsky. Anderson from Mississippi State. He won mm-hmm. SECs. I saw a post race interview of him. The guy looks like a badass. So that gives me really good, strong vibes. But I think Moad's going to lose NCAAs. And then that whole like world leader vibe is going to go out the window because he lost NCAAs. Um, but I think wouldn't that Lavarsky, be the exact? Anderson's going to win. Wouldn't that be the exact appropriate thing, though, for the 800? A guy who gets sixth or something at NCAA's goes and wins the world title. That would be a perfect match for 2022 in the 800. That would. But I'm going. I'm going with Mula from Algeria. He's the next McLuffy. They both have a last name that starts with the letter M, and they're both from Algeria. Yeah. So I'm going with that. I think if Jamie Ask Webb me again in listen, a few more weeks actually listens again, to the. More weeks. I'm picking Jamie Webb if he listens to the pod because. <laughs> That's gonna make you faster because how fast is you know has Jamie Webb run this year? Man, the British eight hundred team is nuts to make. Same thing with the fifteen. It's gonna be crazy. What if he wrote in with guess my PR? Guess my season's best. What did he run? He went what he was lighting it up indoors. Was that last year? I remember he had a good good indoor Result. race. Does he run one forty? Opened the season with the one fifty three. It's funny. See, even Jamie Webb is running out there 152. Okay, there was a heat. Wait, but so no, I'm no. Giving him hard, I'm giving him a hard time. What's his, but obviously, what's his season's he's best, 145. though? 145. 145. Okay, he can win. He, uh, he can win. If you are a 145 runner anywhere in the world, you can win a world championships this year. That's not hyperbole at all. You can win. He's run 144 last year, so he's good. Like, yeah, yeah. He yeah, can win. Jam- you in- Jamie's can win. Yeah, why not? I'll pick Jamie to medal. I'll go with my medals being Mula for the win, mm-hmm. Murphy second, Webb third. That's a we need to play junior. a we we need to play a men before worlds like a game, a men's eight hundred, and just see how far everybody's off. And if it's anybody like actually gets, roulette. yeah, well, if anybody gets the top three, uh, you'll send them a box of uh, hot pockets or something like that. We'll have to figure out how to ship that in dry ice or something because the odds are going to be so low. No one's ever going to get the trifecta of no. the order of the men's eight. That would be very Triple. impressive. Yeah. All right, what guess my PR. Horse racing? Is it called the, what is it called when yeah, they get tra- top three? 
Tri- I think it's a trifecta. I mean, it would be like a multiple team equivalent to like a multiple team parlay. Yeah. Uh, if you're be- if you're betting on you know the NFL, the NBA, which no one ever gets. Let's go to guess my PR now, though. If you want to participate, email uh, flowtrackpodcast at gmail.com. Subject line, guess my PR. Gordon and I will try to predict. We have not seen this person's personal best. Colt is going to give us some clues based on what this week's participant sent in. You can guess in the chat as we go. Colt, give us our first clue, please. All right. This is from Marco. Here's what we're going for. Two different marks. All right, Marco wants us to guess 400-meter hurdle and long jump. Now, long jump, uh, we're going to do this in meters, Gordon. Let's just first of all talk about what unit of measure we're going to use. Meters. I don't know feet. I have no idea. Feet. Gordon, honorary honorary European slash every other country, and he's going with meters and 400-meter hurdles. All right, how many clues do we have total, Colt? All right, we got one, two, three, four, five clues, and then we'll – Reveal the answers. Here's the first clue. First clue. Started track sophomore year in high school. Graduated this year. So he's a senior in, or just finished his senior year of high school. So 18 years old, we'll assume. He's only been doing it for two years. So Yeah. So I'm guessing eight meters is out for a long jump. Yeah, he's not, he's go. he's not jumping eight meters. He's not running... 49 in the 400 hurdles, so I'm guessing. All right, let's keep going. Next clue. Fortunately, you picked the wrong unit of measurement for what we're okay. going for. So his first event, before he's going to give us times. He ran 64.5, and he long jumped 16.6. So I'm going to do feet then, Gordon. <laughs> Sorry. No, I'm, I'm going to convert it 16. All right. So 64. Five. Now we don't know when this five first meters. event. Is, it was sixteen six and sixty four five. We don't know when this first event happened though. He could be talking about his sophomore year. He could be talking about earlier this season. Correct. No, this is I'm assuming his baseline. This is what his first time doing the event was. Okay. Now, sophomore what is year. his PR two years later after from sophomore, junior to senior year? That's what he's trying to make his guess. So, first time he ran the event, sixty four seconds and five meters. What is he now two years later? All right. Next clue. Or is that it? 2022 indoor. Four by four, he split a 55.2. And he ran 7.31 in a 55 meter sprint. Man. How are your 55 meter to 400 meter hurdle to, to long jump. Long jump conversions. I you know, bet I though you could get out. a lot out of well, <laughs> fifty five really meters, you could probably get a lot out of that for the long jump, right? Because short sprint ability. Let's put those up one more time, Colt. Let me see if I can get you anything can. out of that. Fifty five two in the four by four. Seven thirty one. So he's not running faster than fifty five two in the four hurdles. Also that indoor it's an indoor four hundred, so you probably can run faster outdoors. And yeah. Likely, he's probably not running on a good track in high school or indoors. So he probably can run at least a 53 outdoors. I'm eliminating numbers as we go. I'm zeroing in on my guess. We have another clue, Colt, or is that it? Oh, and there he is running. So we got a picture of him. Looks like he's repping the Lancers out there. He's not long jumping. He's running on the track. All right, should we put have people? Oh, G- <laughs> he put his GPA, three point seven. Shout That's out, the last clue. Good, good job. That's a good clue. That weighted or I mean, he is that weighted or unweighted? It's probably unweighted. We don't know. I don't know. AP right. courses. Three point seven in there. Yeah. Yeah. What are his extracurriculars look like? All right. He also attached his personal statement. I'll begin reading that now. All right. <laughs> Any guesses? Put them in the chat. Oh, I thought we were going to get a personal guess. statement. We're, we're not getting the that personal statement? Oh. That was a joke, Gordon. We well, gave us his GPA. Hey, Colt can, you, Colt, can you sell my jokes if Gordon's not going to? I know some of them aren't very good, but just can you just do like an Ed McMahon laugh in the background? For ha! sure, for sure. I, I'm usually okay, muted, thanks. but I am laughing all the time, Kevin, for sure. Every time you're telling jokes. 3.7. Unmuted, I mean, unmuted during this segment. You're not going to sure. get 3.7 means he knows how to learn. 
right? So I mean, <laughs> true. That means he probably improved, right? Because if he's not able to learn, he probably didn't improve. So we know he's better than his first event. And he probably improved a lot. And he All listens right. to the pod, so that's a also a bonus. He probably. I'm, All right. I think I'm, I looking I'm looking at some guesses. I'm looking at some guesses. Kenneth in the chat says 61.8 and 19.2, which is somewhere around the range of what I have. Any other guesses? Get them in now for bragging rights. This is your chance. This is your opportunity. I know you've always all wanted to predict a Ormir Hurdle slash Long Jump PB. Great combo, by the way, too. I like that he's doubling in those two events. It's awesome. What is your guess, Gordon? 59.8. Eight. In the 400 hurdles. And I think he's long jumped. Six meters. Which is... Six. 19 point... Sorry. Let's say 19 and a half feet. Okay, 19 and a half feet. All right, so... I'll just read what I've written down because I'm close with you on one and I'm farther away on the other. I have 59.5 in the four hurdles, but I only have eight. I have 18.6. Okay. So you have 18.6, 59.5, I have 59.8, and 19.5. Yeah. Uh, Jamie says 62.2 and then 6.5 meters. Eamon says 59.3 and 20.08. Wow. Eamon is a believer. 20 point. What's six and a half meters? Can you convert that one real quick? Uh, 6.5 meters. That's 21 feet, over 21 feet. Okay. So a lot of people are really believing him in this I mean, long jump. 3.7 GPA is no joke. <laughs> he's focused. He's able to get his foot on the right spot. He studies the yeah. board very well. Yeah. Adino, 58.8. 19.5. So I'm I'm low. I'm under 19. I'm I'm on the low end here. But again, a lot of that was just uh, pulling something out of nowhere. All right, one more. Someone says 60.7 and 6.58. Man, people are really in on this long jump. Colt, can you please reveal the PRs? Ooh. 63.1 for the four hurdles. And then the long jump, 16.7. 16, 7 for the long jump. Which, hold on a second. PR. His first meet was 16, 6. That's a one, that, that's a one inch PR. One inch right PR. There. And then he was 64, 5. So if those really were from his sophomore year, he improved one inch. And then what was the four hurdle time ended up being? He improved by like a half a Six, second. A, one no, second a second and a one point one point four in the four hurdles. And then one inch in long jump. Is this a cautionary tale against track and field? Because <laughs> if that was two years of work. Two years of work and he only improved an inch? Man. Maybe we misread it. Maybe that was his first mark of the yeah. season. And not... Well, that's what I was asking. First event performance. Either way, it is kind of funny to write in, putting all that stuff. Knowing that your long jump PR only got better by an inch. <laughs> He's got a good sense of humor. Yeah. So maybe it wasn't from his sophomore year. Maybe it was from earlier in his senior year. Uh, well, maybe it was his sophomore got... year. And he's like, maybe he, he was coasting, you know? He, you, he's, a, he's one of those smart kids in high school who doesn't need a study. He can still get a 3.7 GPA. And he doesn't need to train mm -hmm. as hard because he can still, you know, Hit the league yeah, maybe league was... minimum and qualify for, you know, districts with his one inch p with one inch improvement. Yeah. Well, maybe he's just he's studying, right? He's studying. Yeah. He's getting that GPA but up. That's why through the. You that's could... why through the GPA in there. That was a way for him to tell us, "Hey guys, I've been I've been focusing on the books, not the yeah. not the track." That was a good one. But. I do think we've definitely undersold people, and then now we, we had guy we had people predicting twenty one foot long jumps. I do think he should be able to run faster than four hundred hurdles, because fifty five indoor four by four split should be fifty three open outdoor, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. 
He has a little bit of speed. He's running seven three and a fifty five meter dash, whatever that means. Uh, but I do think if you're fifty three, fifty four flat four hundred, and you're learning the hurdles, right? Maybe he should have gave yeah. us his height because that would have been better to understand if he was able to get over the hurdles easily. You would think mm-hmm. doing the 400 hurdles over and over again, you, you learn how to do it, and then you get a big drop in time. Because if your first mm-hmm. race is 64, you should be able to get a big drop when you start figuring out your steps and all that stuff. But Were the hurdles in the right spot? That's what I would wonder. That's a good question. Hey, man. So Keep Brian in the chat brings up a great point. Not a lot of jump coaches in high schools. That Good is point. true. That's been my experience too. You're trying just to get enough adults out there to help. And then they all gravitate right to distance or sprints. And then by the time you get to field events or hurdles, sometimes it's tough. You got people coaching you know, three or four different events. So I remember it's in high difficult. school to get the expertise there and just the repetitions. I remember in high school, freshman year, it was like the first meet of the year. And so all the freshmen got to run and jump and do whatever, because they're like, all right, we're going to see where you are. It was like Mm -hmm. late March, early April meet. It was a home meet. And this kid came who was like new to the team, freshman like me. He's like, I wanted to do the long jump. Cause I was like, Ooh, I want, everyone wants to do the long jump, see how far you can jump. He gets to the, the runway. First attempt. Other people had been attempting. Get, don't get me wrong. Like they've been doing the jump. He runs, runs straight over the board and runs to the edge of the long jump pit and jumps mm-hmm. from the edge of the sand pit because he thought like that's where he jumped from. And yeah, everyone's right? like, what the hell? Is going-? And he almost jumped out of the pit because he was out literally pit, yeah. launching from the edge of the pit to the other end. And I was like, okay, this is – yeah. This is why coaching needs yeah. to exist because this kid thought you were supposed to just leap from the edge of the sand pit. It was fun. You, you can get pretty decent pretty quickly in the long jump if you have a little bit of talent just because you figure out how to take off and obviously yeah. land as well too. But like I've seen people make massive improvements just when they figure out how to get the steps right and then harness some of that athleticism and put, you know, put it in the right direction. On the flip side, though, there's people with huge amounts of talent who, you know, the technique is all over the place just because they can't get the reps down. But that takes a lot of time, and that takes someone guiding them through it, which is tough. Do you think the kids on your high school team knew that they were in the presence of a future dunker? I don't know. At least I think they are. I had a new PB. Yeah. Did you see my story? No. Can you, can you, pull, Cole, can you pull up Gordon's Instagram story? Is that possible? I'm not sure if it's still public. Can you? Wait, did you? Did I you did some PB box training. I did some box jumps. Oh, no. Yes, last night, and I went to the new height. I like went to like the next like six inch higher box to mm-hmm. jump on, and I successfully jumped on it ten times. I was like, "All right, I'm improving." Who filmed you? I was ner- I was nervous every time because when I I was like, "I'm gonna miss and I'm gonna hit my shin and it's gonna be bad," but I got it. Yeah, ten times. Who filmed you? You're becoming one of those athletes that somehow. No, no, I didn't film. I just took a picture. I just took a picture. Oh, there you go. Oh, just took a picture. Man, that's high, man. That goes up to like my waist. And I'm a tall dude. Yeah. So, new PB. There's still one more. There's another level I can go. Another six inches higher. So hopefully I get to that by like August, and then I'll be all right. How many did you do on that one? I did ten. I do ninety jumps. I do ninety jumps. So. I work my way up, and then on the final jumps, eighty-one to to ninety, I was on that one. Good job, Gordon. That's my training. Back on the saddle. His commitment to physical fitness knows no bounds. Well, as I told you, as I told you pre-pod, I got pinned uh, bench pressing again yesterday. So, becoming a habit for me. Let's close out with some YouTube comments. We have five to read here. Colt, can you spin up the first one for us? First one from Kalen in response to Ooh. post, we need to cancel the men's 800 world championships. These guys never even broke two minutes and somehow find the nerve to say no one deserves it. These guys don't know nothing. Hold on. You've broken two minutes, right? Yes, multiple times. So oh, I hate to break it to you, do. buddy. I broke two minutes. Not only 
in college, but also in high school. So, mm -hmm. also so. that's the number from when you can comment is two minutes. Yeah, <laughs> two or one you can't. One fifty nine, you can. That's that's so he nailed it there in terms yeah. of when I'm you're allowed to comment on it. On run one fifty seven, one fifty eight, one fifty nine multiple times. Never faster. Yeah. I was never an elite eight hundred meter runner, but I have broken two, so I guess I can talk about it. So the cancellation is still on because I ran sub two 15 years ago. Well, you should, he should have said, these guys have never even broken 157. He's got to go back in and edit yeah. that post on, on YouTube. It. Yeah. As everybody knows, in order to comment on something, you yourself have to have done it at, a, at the highest level. Otherwise, you cannot exactly. comment objectively that the 800 is slower this year. All right. Except, of course, for Jamie Webb. Uh, next comment. In response to that close finish between Shakari Richardson and Shrika Jackson in the pre-classic hundred, and some people doubting whether or not the photo finish was correct. Griff Mustard, that's a name for you. With mm. all the technology that we have, we should have the runners wear a sensor on their person to assist in determining the winner in those photo finish races. I don't think that would work. Well, they do have a sensor. At least they have right, a they sensor in the bib for like lap counts and like splits. Yeah. Yep. What? Uh, I mean, I don't think the sensor is going to be any different from a photo finish. I think at the end of the yeah. day, it's a, when you it's decide a, a winner, it, it's, it, it's an image. It's like the image of their torso crossing a line. And sometimes that image can be blurry and it can be very mm -hmm. close. I mean, it would be kind of cool if like there was like some type of what cool tracking device could we put on athletes that would like enhance the experience of watching a track race? I liked when Oliver Hoare won the wore the heart rate monitor at Milrose because you could tell how act like how hard he's working, and then that helps you sort of decide how this race is going to play out. Now, <laughs> elite athletes are obviously way different because you're looking at the heart rate you're like oh my gosh like how is it so low he must be jogging so you'd need to do it for a while to establish sort of a baseline and an understanding of what each number means for each athlete but that to me would be fascinating because then if they're falling off you'd be like all right they're falling off because they're gassed or they're falling off just because something else is an issue or maybe just the the every everybody else decided to make a move i think the heart rate stuff is fascinating for the longer stuff I think we need GoPros on everyone's forehead. That would be fun. Mm. Just one race. A steeplechase with GoPros. That would be fun. Steeplechase with GoPros on their head. Yeah, yeah. Next comment. We got three left. This is uh, from our internet coach submission, Matthew, who wrote in with uh, how to run a fast eight. He, said, he updated us. He says, we'll send race video on June 12th. Hopefully Gordon does not cook my legs. Yeah, you came up with some really hard workouts in that section. They're not hard. Uh, that I'm, I'm worried about, Matthew. I came up with a race advice. I, I'm not a master tactician. I'm not Bernard the Gott. I am not uh, Jenny Simpson. So hopefully it works out for you, Matthew. But yes, please, please give us the update. He's going to be fine. New PB coming, I believe. Be a feather in your cap for uh, your coaching. From Ooh. David, it's so simple. Gordon needs to give up on dunking and adult soccer and become a dedicated thrower. Throwers can eat anything, embrace it, and also cover some field events once in a while. <laughs> That's a good comment there. I like it. Uh, Gordon's eating has gotten better. He's been sending me pictures on his last shopping trip. First of all, he bought more than five things. The candy to real food ratio was much more appropriate. There was some dry spaghetti. That I saw, there was some ground beef. There were those. There was two prepackaged fresh meals. One was pork tenderloin. One was salmon. By the way, Gordon liking salmon is one of the great upsets of 2022. <laughs> like you might think Salmon's someone has great. long odds in the in the men's 800. Like some person way off the board might win it. Like that's the greatest upset in track in 2022. No, it's the fact that Gordon Mack actually likes salmon. This guy, he only likes half of like the Burger King menu. That's how discerning he is. Like it's in, like if there's a tomato on something, it's like, nope, it's out. And the fact that like he tomato. likes salmon 
exactly, was just completely stunning to me. But he's doing a better job, guys. I think it worked. I think the pressure we're putting on him is having an impact. Yeah. You know, I'm trying. Speaking of throwers, the guy said he, was, he, he wants us to talk about throwing. What's, what's like your – is there a throw event that you're eyeing a little bit on the side of your, of your eye bit as we get closer <laughs> to Worlds? Well, Kovacs is throwing to Rome, right? Yeah. So I want to, I want to see that, obviously. I mean, wh- women's disc is interesting with what Allman's been, do- when, been doing. I mean, the men's disc collegiately, they had the collegiate record this year. That's all been good. But I think the men's shot's been historic the last couple years. So how could you, how could you not want to see that? It's been must-see. Yeah. I think Kovacs might beat Krauser. Ah, come on. Come on. I can't lose my house twice in a row. Come on, man. I think you might, dude. Don't say that to might. me. I think you might lose your house twice. You're going to double, you're going to triple down in 2023. Mm-hmm. When you do lose your house, because mm-hmm. Ryan Krauser gets upset again at World Championships, because for then some I'm reason, sto- I'm, I'm going to stop World's making happens, picks. Krauser loses. Uh, he just wins in the Olympics, which is the more important time to win anyway. No, what would be your 2023 pick? Like, you went all in on the sprints with Lyles. That didn't work out. You're now going all in on Krauser in the, in the throws. That's not going to work out. I'm already saying it. So where for are you going to go For the good of the sport, I would not pick anybody because I would just feel so guilty. I would probably pick, considering the current trajectory, I would probably pick Sydney. That would be the next person. Or maybe like Yulamar Rojas. That one seems pretty safe. Yeah, but the way Honda. you go is who you think is safe then becomes unsafe. You thought Lyles was safe. You thought Krauser was safe. You're, you're the, the chef's, was it chef's kiss? Is that the phrase? Kiss of death? Kiss of death? You're the kiss of death. Whoever you believe there was in. There kiss involved in both of those. You're like the Madden cover of track and field. Chef's kiff, you know, the death. Madden curse. It's the Kevin's house curse. Whoever yeah. Kevin yeah. wants to bet his house on is not going to win. I mean, it's not good. Yeah. All right, we got two more. One more. What do we got? Last one. Uh, David again talking about Phil Knight spending potentially $2 billion to buy the Blazers and what that would look like in track. He says Phil Knight might be investing $2 billion in the NBA which he or his family will get back someday. Regarding track and field, the $2 billion would simply be a donation. There's no money to be made for investors. Just give money to Dana White and tell him to run track and field like the UFC. I thought you Dude, came up with great, some good ideas in that segment. That's a great comment. Whoever said that, David, that's a great comment. It's true. It would be a donation. It would not be an investment. It would not multiple, multiply revenue. Because, yeah, the track and field, just the way it's run, it's, it's, we see all these leagues come out and it's all via like the owners are donating to the sport. Hell, we are elite athletes. The USATF Foundation mm-hmm. is a charity. The, mm-hmm. our, the best athletes are giving money via a charity from the USATF Foundation. Like, yeah, yeah. That's a problem. And I do agree. I do think Dana White, if we gave him the keys to the car, keys to track and field, he could turn track. He would be able to turn Shakari, Elaine Thompson, hurrah, into, I mean, already is must-watch television, but even crazier must-watch television. Imagine Dana White being able to direct the men's 100 and the women's 100. It would be insane. Imagine Dana White being able to direct the, the five Ks. I don't think has anything to do with the per- – I think and a lot of people could direct it. The, the question is the willingness of the people to do it and the monetary incentives for them to do it. It's not hard. You have people running an event that everybody understands and you have them run frequently enough so that way people learn more about them. The problem is the finance. Like it's not, it's not rocket science. Like track used to be really popular. People used to get into yeah. this stuff. It's, it, there's no crazy change in formula. It's like get the fastest people talking about the sport, talking about racing each other and show them racing a lot. That's just... The no, simplest the, the solution change, is the best solution. There's, no, there's nothing crazy about formula it. formula is the incentive Give me two billion, model. I just, can do it. They need to hammer in the incentive yeah. model. Obviously, money is the biggest thing to incentivize people. But there needs to be incentive 
to care about the regular season, and there just isn't yep. right now. Even when you give out appearance fees, even when you try to create the Diamond League structure, at the end of the yeah, day, yeah. you need to figure out a way to incentivize caring about winning a race more than once a year. Twice a year if you're an American. Mm-hmm. Like, that's the problem. You need to figure out a way to make people care about losing and winning more than once a year. Thanks, everybody, for the comments. Keep them coming. Um, looking here at the chat. All in the game says a thing. Rojas Mono, Krauser, the safest picks. Uh, Rack says Krauser is throwing 75 6 from a static start. His goal is 78 this year. Feet. I'll have to convert that. Um, <laughs> Jamie says, Do you want my plan? I'm guessing that's for the 800. Yeah. Maybe that segment turns into us just being the intermediaries between fast people and people who want help running a personal best maybe that's the better way to do it dude jamie's gonna totally get third at worlds this year it's gonna happen it all started here it all started actually here. probably started a long time ago for him when he was training but i'm just saying yeah. for the purposes of this show started right here all right well that's it again let me go through the schedule one more time for folks and for gordon Thursday, 3 p.m. Central in the United States. Friday, 10.30 p.m. Central. Shout out if you're watching overseas that day. You know, that would be an impressive feat there. On Saturday, 7 p.m. Central. Sunday, 5 p.m. Central. And then Monday, back to our normal 9 a.m. Central time. We got all that, Gordon? I got it all. We're going to – a lot of track. Diamond League, NCAAs, and – Continental Tours. It's going to be wild. One more thing. Give me a sleeper NCAA pick. Right now? I mean, Navarsky Anderson. No. In 20 minutes. No, oh, you already did that one. One you haven't done. In 20 minutes from now? Again, that was a joke. Of course I won. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Colt. That's like the pod's over. <laughs> I, I said, give me, sleeper. A sleeper. I said, give me a sleeper. I said, give me a sleeper pick him. before you go. And you said, now? Yes. No, you said in 20 minutes. Sleeper I pick? Know. Um, Quavel Jordan, 400 hurdles. Houston. Is that what you want? I'm giving you sleepers. You're, you're, not, you're not accepting Low track podcast at gmail.com. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Great end of the show here. Gordon, really put the exclamation point on this. Uh, thanks, Colt, for producing. Thanks, and laughing along. You're the laugh track of this I'm show, laughing. and I appreciate it. This is a great pod. I appreciate everything. Gordon's shaking Kevin. his head. Just a terrific way to kick off our consecutive pod streaks. Really appreciate everybody listening. Hope you guys tune in uh, over the coming days. Going to have a lot of track to talk about starting tomorrow. After that Rome Diamond League meet, we'll talk to you guys then.